Guides are used for positioning and aligning objects so that they're balanced on the screen. There are two types of guides, the ruler and column guides. Let's look at ruler guides first. I'd like to add some text to my page and I want to use the ruler guides to make sure that they're aligned. You can access the rulers by opening the preview modes drop down menu and toggling the rulers. Now I have horizontal and vertical rulers. The origin for both begin at the top left of the artboard and move in response to panning and zooming. I can tap drag on the rulers to bring a ruler guide onto the workspace. As I drag, a mini dialog will appear, telling me the current measurement on the vertical ruler to help me precisely position the guide. When it's in position, I'll release to place it. I can drag out as many guides as I like. I'll just add a couple more for my layout. Objects can snap to the guides when snapping is enabled, but the guides will also snap when they're near key areas like the center point of the document. I'll enable snapping by tapping the magnet icon in the top right. And now we can see that the guide is snapping to the center. You can remove unwanted guides by dragging them back to the rulers. Next, I'll introduce some vertical guides by dragging out from the vertical ruler. I can also go back and reposition the guides at any time by tap dragging them on the workspace or using the blue indicator on the rulers themselves to avoid accidentally moving objects on the document. You can add or edit your guides in the guides panel. To access this panel, go back to the preview drop down menu and select guide settings. This position figure will tell me the position of the last selected guide. If it is a vertical guide, it's the position on the horizontal ruler. And if it's a horizontal guide, it's the value on the vertical ruler. I can tap these two buttons to add new horizontal or vertical guides and edit their locations by tapping to select them and then tapping the position value and entering a new number. I can select unwanted guides from the document and delete them by tapping the bin icon in the guides panel here. I can delete all the guides by pressing the X button or just temporarily hide them by toggling the visibility. From this panel, I can also add margins to the document, but I'll come back to this later. One last thing to mention is that you can move the origin point of the two rulers. If you tap drag from the point where the two rulers meet, you can drag out the origin. The rulers will move with it and it will snap to the guides that you've already placed on the workspace. If we look back at the guides panel and select each guide, the measurements have been adjusted according to the new origin. We can also see that the spread origin has been updated with the new position. And like the guides, we can also enter specific coordinates. I'll change them back to zero and zero to set it back to the original position. Now that I'm happy with my ruler guides, I can tap this padlock icon to lock them in place so I don't accidentally move them when working on the document. Now I'll introduce some text. I'll open the layers panel and find my text layers that I made earlier and toggle their layer visibility on. Now I can close the panel and switch to the move tool to reposition the text to the areas defined by the guides. Snapping will help me align the text perfectly to the guides. I can hide or show the guides by toggling the preview mode on or off. Next I'm going to show you how to use column guides. First, we need to look at the preview modes drop down menu and check that Show Column Guides is enabled. Then we're going to open the guide settings again. There currently doesn't appear to be any columns. This is because by default, there's always one column and it's the entire width of the page. If we increase the number of columns to two or more and add a small gutter, they'll become visible. We can also split our columns into rows below, so we're beginning to build up a grid for our layout. The gutter value determines the size of the gaps between the rows and columns. I'll tap the value and change it to 7. You can choose whether you like the columns filled as they are here or view them as outlines. You can also tap this colour well to change the colour of the columns to something more visible. You can set a margin when you create a new document, but you can also add margins later if you decide to. If the chain in the centre is linked, it means the values will change together. If I tap one margin and change it to 10, the others will become 10 as well. If I tap the chain, it unlinks and now I can change the figures separately. I only want margins on three sides of the layout, so I'll change the top margin back to zero. Now that the layout is set up, 
I can start adding images and text. I'll go to the document menu and select place, and then place from files. I'll find the images for my document and select them both, and tap open. Because I'm placing multiple images, the place images panel has appeared to show which one will be placed first. I can select a different one if I'd like to place that first instead. I can tap drag to place the image to the size that I want. If snapping is enabled, the image will snap to the column guides. Alternatively, I could tap once and the image will be placed at its full size, although you might need to resize it or reposition it with the move tool. The panel will disappear automatically when all the images have been placed. Now I'll add some text. First, I'll add a title, so I'll select the Artistic Text tool on the Tools panel and drag out the approximate size. I can tap the keyboard icon near the bottom or write in a space and my handwriting will be converted to text. I'll title this article Hope Cottage and use the Move tool to reposition it to the column guides. Next, I'll add some text frames. To access this, I'll tap the Artistic Text tool and then tap it again to view the list of text tools and now tap on the Frame Text tool. I'll drag out a text frame using the column guides and then paste some placeholder text that I copied earlier by long pressing and selecting Paste. I'll then use the Move tool and Command on the Command Controller to duplicate the text frame. I could also create duplicates with the Quick menu. Finally, I'll open the Layers panel and toggle the layer visibility on the section header to complete my document. Now I'll enable Preview mode to hide the column guides and see how everything looks with my final layout. So that was a look at how to use ruler and column guides. Thanks for watching.